Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day and welcome to Tara at Home. I'm here with Angelo from Mrs. B's Gift House and you're actually one of the vendors at our Tara at Home Winter Market. So we thought we would come into your shop here in Burlington and do a little investigation. Second we walk in the door, everybody said, oh my goodness, it smells so good in here because you do wonderful baked goods, dipping them in chocolate. Tell us about your business. Well, uh, we've been uh, baking uh, biscotti here for uh, better part of uh, 20, 25 years now. Hmm. So you kind of know and, what you're doing. Uh, we sort of know what we're doing. <laughs> We've uh, uh, came together with a recipe that is a little different than what most biscottis are mm -hmm. um, accustomed to. So for example, when you have biscotti, typically they're, you need to dip them. Mm -hmm. um, they crumble yes. and so on and so forth. And they're, you know, people, that's the way they're supposed to be made. Okay. We, we basically have taken that biscotti and taken it to the 21st century. I see, because you are Italian um, in background, so you I know what a biscotti is supposed to be like. Well, right? we know what it's supposed to be like. But, but you decided you needed to change it up We a need little. to change it up. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's just one of those items that we figured if we make them a little softer, mm -hmm. um, people would uh, eat them more often. Right, uh, because the average biscotti is very, very crunchy, very, very hard, yeah, right? Yeah. So yours well, is a little bit softer. And when I used to buy them years ago, I used to take a bite of one and lose the other half of it. So, I, you know. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to do uh, that. We don't want to do There's that. There's no, no wasting allowed when it comes to So this we stuff. make them that, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit softer. We bake them here in the, in the shop every day. Mm -hmm. Um, we, uh, That's why it smells so good. We, it smells great. Uh, it's funny because uh, the, the smell goes uh, right through the uh, the, the plaza, and, uh, <laughs> and everybody just follows their nose. Our, right? our business partners next door and so on all go. Hmm, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, they come to our store to buy something, sure. but they leave and come to yours and then come back. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and we so do tell sample me about some of your them. flavors that you have in your <clears> Well, we, uh, the, the original biscotti is, is our most popular one, which mm -hmm. is an apricot almond, mm -hmm. and uh, it's. Uh, uh, made with traditional products, and mm -hmm. again, uh, the best way to describe it is uh, most of the products are, uh, are made with, everything's made with natural products, mm -hmm. um, but sure. much of it is, is uh, unique in taste. Yes. Uh, the, the, we buy the freshest products, the freshest ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, we also make a double dark. Mm. We also make a blueberry lemon. Uh, we make a cranberry orange, and we also have some seasonal ones. We just finished a, a peppermint uh, biscotti. Sure, I'm back at Christmas time. Uh, mm -hmm. On uh, Thanksgiving, we do a uh, uh, pumpkin. Oh, cool. And uh, we do um, all different types depending on the uh, I love that. Uh, on the event. So I guess a great idea is for people can come in and, and, uh, and also at the winter market can buy some of your biscotti. And we're going to talk about how obviously on Valentine's Day it's fun to do with kids, but it's also fun for adults as well to be dipping in chocolate. So there are some techniques when we're warming up chocolate that we need to talk a little bit about. And then also dipping as well so you're not getting chocolate all over your kitchen. Yep. So give us a, a few tips. You have milk and white chocolate in front of us right we now. We have uh, milk and white chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, presently uh, ready here to go mm -hmm. and what we basically do is once we've uh, uh, made our biscotti we we basically this is the final product but what we mm -hmm. do we take we make a three inch uh, portion and then we make a six inch portion okay okay and we take uh, the product and we basically dunk it in chocolate mm -hmm. and then we take a little bit of the excess and we sort of put it on a diagonal right and we just lay them down on a tray in this case we put them on the plate mm -hmm. and then we do the same thing we do in a milk chocolate as well and typically um, we also have a dark chocolate that we use but we're just using for sure. demonstration purposes these two. And how long do you need to, I'll show the camera these, yep. um, how long do we need to let these cool? These will uh, set in uh, anywhere depending on temperature, again mm -hmm. it's warm in here, we're baking and so on, so this will probably take uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Do you put them into the fridge? Uh, no, we no. do them all at room temperature, okay. Um, okay. everything um, uh, chocolate is okay to go in the fridge. I, mm -hmm. I don't recommend it because okay. uh, it blooms, it takes the sugar out of it. Ah, and some tips. people freeze it and that's okay, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, I don't, you can freeze our product, but yeah. I don't usually don't recommend, recommend it. it. These will last three months. Ooh, um, that as is long good. As, as long as they're in the package sure. and they're out of the sun and they say they stay soft. Uh, um, that's and great. I, and I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll, we'll take one of these, it's already done. Yeah. And I'm just going to just break it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't crack, it doesn't no, crumble, it doesn't losing. do any of that stuff. Uh -huh. So uh, if we had time, we'd eat some of this. And, uh, so, uh, you know, as time a, for eating, <laughs> Angelo. <laughs> uh, it's interesting, I, I broke that one together. Right. I broke this one. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the pieces break when I cut them. They come mm -hmm. in their large tray, sometimes they break. So what sure. we do with them, we actually make a biscotti truffle with it. Oh. And what we basically do with it. Smart. Here, here's an example of a small piece. Mm -hmm. And we basically take it mm -hmm. and we dunk it in chocolate. 
This is what comes from mistakes, this, right? This comes <laughs> from, you know, it's interesting. You know, we don't waste anything. I grew no. up in Montreal in a, in a very tough uh, neighborhood uh, mm -hmm. south of Montreal and mm -hmm. grown up uh, in an immigrant family that was tough. We sure. didn't waste anything. You so waste you learn this. You learn so, that that is going to be quite awesome, that so little that guy one, right there. That on one the plate. will solidify. Mm -hmm. And it'll look. Eventually, you make it all fancy. Eventually, like this fancy, and I'll show you how to do that if you want. Okay. Uh, that's uh, yeah. The, the drizzling of the, the chocolate—that's always uh, a little bit of a technique, right? So it's actually quite simple. You take okay. the product. You get a fork or anything that's got uh, more than one point to it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a little bit messy. But then you just you just drizzle. See, and that just takes it up a whole or notch. Like if you did this at your house, you could just make people think you're a professional. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Even though we are, right? Right. And then you can actually dress them up with other things. You know, when you're doing this kind of drizzle, sure. you can put some coconut on it. You can put some Oh, and of course almond. we have, because it's Valentine's Day. And because it's Valentine's Day, absolutely. We're right? actually going to do some of this oh, stuff here. I love here. that. See? See, kids and, love this stuff, right? And there you go. There's your next valentines -y. Now, when it comes to chocolate, you obviously have, when you're warming it up, you have this special sort of um, type of heater. But at home, you, you don't want to put the chocolate directly onto a burner, right? You no. need to put on a double the boiler. The actual best way to, to, to melt chocolate, and again, for the home use, is mm -hmm. what they call a double boiler. Yes. Um, you have uh, a pot with some water. You get a stainless steel container. You put your chocolate in. And you don't really want the water underneath to boil. Okay. Okay. You, okay. you don't want your chocolate to get... Uh, to a point where it's scorching hot. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, depending whether it's white, milk, or dark, and also depending on the type of chocolate, whether you're buying uh, European blends or whether mm -hmm. you're buying North American mm -hmm. blends, sure. they all uh, melt at different levels. And, and, and the range the range is anywhere between 58 degrees and probably about 72 degrees. Wow, so you have to be careful. And then, and then you have to be careful. You yep. need a you know, candy thermometer. Yep. Uh, we, we, when you do this long enough, you, you go by eye, and typically mm -hmm. what happens is the you best way to tell is, is right? it's got a smooth, yeah. smooth turn. And you have to temper your chocolate by putting, once it's ready, mm -hmm. by putting um, more chocolate into the product that's not melted. And you mix oh. the unmelted chocolate into the melted chocolate to take away some of that heat. Holy. And that's the difference between that, that, that shine that mm -hmm. you see sometimes. Right. I see. Um, but that's why I guess we leave it up to you guys to do, right? Because that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know what? Before we wrap, you know, because really we talked about that this basically endless. You can dip all kinds of wonderful things into chocolate, but you can also go to our Terra at Home Winter Market, visit you guys today. The market is open until 3 o'clock this afternoon at our Milton location, and you're selling all kinds of, of your beautiful products. Absolutely. And if you don't feel like making it tonight, then you can just go home and give your treats to all your family members because it is Valentine's. Yep, absolutely. So thank you for letting us into your space. It's beautiful in here, and it smells wonderful. Our pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you at the market. We'll see you at the market. Okay, absolutely. thanks, Angelo. We'll be back with more Terra at Home. Right after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're at the Dundas Valley Conservation Area and I'm here with Braden Marshall and we are here to talk about Braden's Hot Chocolate Festival. And it's your hot chocolate festival. It is, Which is yes. kind of cool. So you are how old? Um, I'm 12 right now. You are 12. How did you come up with this? Um, well, one day uh, my dad and I were just uh, alone. It was, I had the day off. So mm -hmm. I uh, asked him if um, 
I could do a lemonade stand. Uh, but he pointed out that it was a bit too cold for lemonade <laughs> because it was uh, in the middle of November. Mm, okay. So uh, instead I suggested hot chocolate. There you go. And then we just started getting all the media for it and it well. just took off. We had way more people than we expected. So this isn't like hot chocolate stand at the end of your driveway. This went really, really big. And how many years now is it for this um, festival? This will be our fourth year. So, so uh, big, it's called it's festival, a festival, right? Yes, okay, yes, so, it and it's actually held here at the conservation oh, area. It is, yes. Right, yes. and it's held on family day, which is such a perfect thing to do because on family day, everything's closed, no one knows what to do with their kids, but it's, you're supposed to be with your family. So what right. a great place to be is to go to a festival and to spend some time outdoors because here in Canada, a lot of time this time of year, we kind of hunker down, we don't go outside, but we should, right? So one up and should. go to the Hot Chocolate Festival. So tell me what happens at the Hot Chocolate Festival. Obviously there's hot chocolate. Um, well, we have hot chocolate supplied by Tim Hortons, mm -hmm. and we also have musical entertainment. So um, like bands coming in and playing? We do. Um, wow. So last year we had uh, the local musicians, mm -hmm. Katie Bully, um, Tara Lightfoot, and uh, Elfie Smith. Wow. And uh, returning this year, we'll have John Ellison. So you know what, everybody loves that, right? Because that's what makes a festival is having music as well, right? So right. it kind of is, it makes for a cool environment. It does. Now, you've been running this festival, obviously, for, again, this is coming up to the fourth year. So yes. how's the weather been over the years? Um, we've actually had very clear weather every time. It's been, um, it's been nice and cool, so mm -hmm. you'll enjoy a good cup of hot chocolate. Right, but, right. Um, it's been very clear. That's good. This is a good thing, right? So again, you want to spend some time outdoors with your family. Obviously, it is winter, so it's going to be a little bit chilly. And again, yes. it is on family day, so it's a day where, you know, you, again, it's just spending some time with your family. So music, what else can we do with our family here at the festival? Um, there's a storyteller's corner mm -hmm. with um, local storyteller uh, Anna Schaefer mm -hmm. and um, local uh, children's author um, Joan Krigsman. Wow. That's so neat, and that's so. great because again, you're going to have people here from all ages, right? So little, little, little ones to right. grandpas and grandmas, right, coming to the festival. You do, yeah. So they'll enjoy the music. Kids can enjoy some stories, and again, so. obviously, you've got the whole entire environment of being able to go out, you know, on snowshoeing and all kinds of fun things, right? right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we'll also have some snowshoeing um, provided by Adventure Attic. Well, those guys um, are great. How fun is that? So yeah. people can come and just and be able to rent snowshoes and go out. Yes, cool. uh, we will. Um, cool. So th I think there will be uh, some guided snowshoeing tours as well. That's good, because so. I was saying earlier that I got lost here once, so it's, yeah, can it's I wear, I'll maybe have to wear one of your orange toques. Yeah, there. <laughs> you stand you know up. what you're doing, right? But again, it's all, you know, and, you know we need to talk about, obviously, um, the fact that this is really for a great cause that you're doing this. So this is also, it's not just fun and festival, but it's for it's a fundraiser as well for it the is. conservation area. It is. It's for the uh, Dundas Valley Conservation Area, mm -hmm. so we... Um, raise money for them so they can uh, preserve the land they have mm -hmm. and maybe gain some more. How special is that, right? So, and we have yeah. to value this land because we're always knowing there's always building going on. There's, and so this is area that is protected mm -hmm. and people can't build here. And this is area where people get to go out and enjoy nature. So we need to protect it, but there, there's sure. certain care that comes with that as well. So this is money that's going back into the spot where we're having a big party. It right? is. So tell um, me about the hours. When does it start? So it starts at uh, 11 a.m. and mm -hmm. goes until 4 p.m. Okay. Um, and so people can come and spend the whole day if they want? They can. Okay. Um, yeah, Very it's, cool. It's open to everyone. Okay, okay, so obviously hot chocolate, and I understand food trucks are going to be there. Um, we will have some food trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still in the process of deciding, but we mm -hmm. know for sure that Gorilla Cheese will be there. Gorilla um, Cheese on a, hot, on a cold day is really good, right? <laughs> Yeah, it is. And you guys um, had food trucks last year too, right? Oh, we did. Mm -hmm. We had a um, we had a uh, Greek food truck. Mm -hmm. um, we had a um, we also had grilled cheese again. Sure, yeah. So lots. Of, I mean, lots of options, right? You want to have food, you got to have drinks, and you got to have a, a really good time. So lots of fun things for family to do, and I think that's where right. you know that's where it really all comes together, right? So. When you're, you're coming, are you actually paying an admission? Like, how are you raising the money from this? Um, it's uh, $5 for parking here okay, okay. Um, at the 
conservation area, mm -hmm. but it's um, we have a free shuttle from Highfield School. Okay. Up um, just past here. Okay. So um, high park, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank and you. so so people can go and park their cars there, and then get in a shuttle and come here because that's right. the thing, right? We're a conservation area, so you're obviously you're you're trying to get as many people here as as possible. Yeah. So what are we talking in terms of numbers? Like how many people? Um, we estimated um, about four thousand people. What? <clears throat> no way. Yeah, we really? uh, sold about oh for I'd say three thousand cups of hot chocolate. Oh so. my goodness. So I guess um, you guys are going to have to, because it's possible, at, as each year, usually with events like this, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So you guys kind of have to look at numbers. How does, how does a little 12-year-old guy do this? How do you do this? Is your dad uh, helping you out at all? He or? does. He <laughs> this definitely is good, does. Right? He's, um, a, he's an adult, right? Mm, you need a little yeah. help. Just with the posters mm -hmm. and... Yeah. Yeah, getting the word out there. That's right. About it's all it. about getting the word out. And for me, I'm like, wow, this is an awesome idea. I have a little six-year-old guy, and yeah. I'm thinking, what a great thing to do. Thank you. Right? Uh, really cool idea. So com something Thank from coming so so small little idea, and it just goes to show you what what kids can do, right? You know, yeah, right? I, I in, guess in, so. In the big scheme of life. Now, do you plan to keep on doing this? Um, we do. Yeah? Yes. Just I, keep on I, making it bigger yeah, and better. I do as long as. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as long as people want it to happen, right. You know, so you're finding good success. It. Now, are you getting any? Do you get good, really good feedback from people? What do people want to see? Are, have you added things from past years and kind of like made it bigger and bigger? Um, we have. Mm -hmm. The first mm -hmm. year, we uh, really didn't have a stage for okay. the music. So, mm -hmm. um, in the past two years, we've had a stage, um, mm -hmm. so we could have more musicians good. and equipment on sure. there. That's smart, right? And of course, that would be good feedback from musicians, right? Hey, we don't yeah. really want to stand in the snow. Let's give us something kind of, uh, and right. you can see how this could get bigger and bigger, right? And obviously, we know, again, it's winter, right? So it's gonna be a little bit weather right. pending, but really just bundle up and come on out and, and have a good time. So is it all in the grass and the trees, or how does it work? Um, you know, we have the uh, main part, the hot chocolates, usually sold at the, um, when you come up the hill, yeah. there's at the front entrance okay. uh, to this building, mm -hmm. the, that's where the hot chocolates usually sold, okay. um, and then we have the stage down, um, down on the hill. So there's lots um, of space for people to move around, right? So it's not a cramped space, is. we're at our conservation area, right? Right. And so, then, lots of space. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. want to walk or something, you can, uh, cool. you can take your snowshoes and you I can go it. up. And so that's, I guess you probably, in a way, kind of hope for a little bit of snow, right? To give it we kind do. of some atmosphere. Do. You don't want a big um, muddy celebration, but mud's good no. too. It's fine, right? It is. You could turn yeah. into a mud party, right? Mm. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's true. Well, again, we have a website as well. It's hotchocolatefestival.ca. Uh, .ca. So people can go onto the website, find out more information, and plan their day with their family. Again, it's family day, so it's always hard to find something fun to do. This is the perfect Canadian thing to do. And good for yes. you for coming up with the idea. Good Thank thing you. on Dad to help uh, back you and support you. And uh, good thing on the Tukes too. Thank so you. We're busy in the crowd, right? <laughs> good yep. job, Braden. Thank you. Keep the keep the work up because that's a really good thing for such a young age. I mean, again, four years you've been doing this since you were a wee one, right? I, I love have, it. Uh, good for you. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you. All right, more Tara at home after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the Medallion Plant Tag. Medallion Plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And uh, as of course we've noted throughout the show, it is Valentine's Day today. Mm. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. So we decided to, off of our heart-shaped pizza last week that we yep. did on the show, we decided to make a cute little dessert. And uh, sometimes it's just nice to have a little bite of something, something sweet with your, something with your wine. Something small, something sweet. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, this goes really, really well with dessert wine. 
I'm, dessert I'm wine. just thinking that right now. Oh yes. You know, we know that uh, it's uh, we're so close to our lovely ice wine that we have down in Niagara, That's and right. the ice wine festival's been going on through the whole month of January. So hopefully you bought yourself a bottle by now, and this will be good to uh, to bring that yeah, out. Exactly. Good a little occasion. late harvest Vidal or something. Mm -hmm, something, mm -hmm. something sweet will go well with this. Okay. This is a pretty simple kind of little dessert item. Mm -hmm. um, once you have all the ingredients, this probably takes the longest to make, and that's just creme anglaise. So oh, okay. again, fairly simple recipe. You're tempering some eggs, you got some cream in there, you got vanilla. It, it's not a hard thing to make. Mm -hmm. What's nice about creme anglaise is it does last in your fridge for about a week. Okay, that's what I was thinking, because you want to make that ahead of time. You want to make sure. it ahead of time. Yep. yep. Have it done, have it ready to go. Okay. So we have some creme anglaise. We have mascarpone cheese. Now, mascarpone cheese is really great. This is the cheese that they use in tiramisu. The only mm. thing with it is it is really, really firm. Yes. Okay, so you want to take it out of the fridge a little bit ahead of time. Let it warm up a bit before you try to work with it because okay. it is a fairly firm cheese. Okay. Then we have some strawberries. Now, unfortunately, you know where we are, strawberries are not in season, so they are brought in. I know, it's funny because everybody always wants to eat strawberries on Valentine's, but it's so not that time so of year. So not that time of year, <laughs> that's right. How about a little bit of fennel or something? Yeah, I know, no <laughs> kidding. But it's funny because they, they sort of have a little heart shape to them and they're bright red and it just works out. It so works out. You have to People find the like best them. that you can find, right? That's right. And your best bet is when you're going through the strawberries, try to find the larger ones. Yes. Um, because what you have to do is you're going to hollow them out, mm -hmm. okay? You need to make something, some space for the stuffing that you're going to make. Well, our little Ontario strawberries wouldn't cut it anyway because they're no. so cute and tiny and sweet and yeah. so so it's fine that they're not in season. We're using these big ones uh, coming That's up from right. California, it, I guess. These are California for yeah. sure. So what we're going to do, we take the top off and now I have a great little paring knife. It's got a little bit of a hook on it so yeah. it makes it a little bit easier to work with as yes. opposed to, uh, say, a straight paring knife. <laughs> sure. No, absolutely. This is where that you want to pull that one out because, you know, you have that in your drawer sometimes and you barely ever use it. That's this right. This is the moment. This is it. And you're just going to cut out the core of the strawberry. So I'm always a big thing, a big person about uh, washing your fruit, <laughs> like huge, yeah. huge, huge, wash your fruit, wash your fruit, because some people just don't. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that you, strawberries can get very, um, they, they're quite porous and they can soak up the water. So you want to make sure they're nice and dry too, right? You don't want a lot of moisture in there. I yep. mean, you're okay because the two things that you're using here, especially the mas mascarpone not having a lot of moisture to it, mm -hmm. it'll hold. But you do want, you know, mm -hmm. fairly dry, pat them down, make sure mm -hmm. that there's an excess water there for okay. you. Okay. So a little time consuming, but again, you, you don't you don't have to make a lot of them. No, it's and you do them ahead of time. This right. will hold. Oh, okay. Okay, so what we'll do is we're gonna we're gonna mix the two uh, creme anglaise and the mascarpone together in the bowl. Oh, and you are going to mix yep, it. Yep, we're gonna okay. mix it together. All right, because mascarpone doesn't have it, a sweetness to it until you, you have to add a sugar to it, or does it it's have It's got a little bit of residual sugar in there. Like, it's sweeter than most cheeses. Right. Um, very similar to what you would get out of a, um, a cream cheese. So it's got a little bit I of see. there. Okay. Cream cheese tends to be a little a little bit more sour. You could mm -hmm. use that as well because mm -hmm. you are using oh, uh, sure. creme anglaise, which has a lot of sugar in it. I mean, this is basically a sugar custard mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mix all that I've made tiramisu before, but I've never actually tried mascarpone on its own. So it's I, nice. It's I'm nice kind of visualizing it being slightly sweet. But. It is slightly sweet. Okay. It's not overly sweet, but it is slightly. And you're just going to mix that around. Now, the other little trick, I mean, you can do this with a spoon for sure. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult. It will take a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is to have piping bags. So, oh, you know, it's the little things that idea. make my job a little easier. Having a disposable piping bag, oh, yes. great for many jobs in the kitchen. You probably buy, if you bought one box of them, it might last the home cook two, three years. I was just thinking that is actually a great idea because you're going to get so frustrated <laughs> trying, trying to, keep, to do this. Because you want it and you want to keep it neat, right? You don't want to have it all over the place and like, yeah, hey, like honey, look at my to, sloppy strawberries. <laughs> if you're trying to do that like that, I mean, it's... It's a little bit time consuming. No. See what I mean? They really be worth it. <laughs> I really love you them. You really got to like them. <laughs> All right. So, what I'm going to do is I took piping bag, cut the tip off on a bit of an angle. Okay. So, that doesn't have to be super smooth. It doesn't have to. I yeah, mean, you it, can, it'll I, be a little bit chunkier. You'll yeah. get a little bits of cheese in there. Yeah. You wouldn't taste want good, it. Actually. Yeah. You'll get that little bite here and there. Yeah. And you're going to put it into our piping bag. That is, that I think is the best idea. <laughs> it is. It's so much easier. And like I said, I mean, they're not expensive. No. You can find them at most stores, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a supplier that brings ours, but uh, you should be able to find it. Now, say you didn't make creme anglaise. Can you buy it? I don't know. Yeah. I always wondered that. I don't know. If you could buy it. But yeah. I guess, it's, as you say, it's easy enough to make. So it, it's a really simple Just process. It. Yeah, it is okay. a really simple process. If you do any cooking at home, this is not a hard thing. And you know what? It is a nice thing to have 
in in the house. Mm -hmm. um, anytime you have dessert, lots of desserts. yeah, lots right. of desserts. Okay. There we go. Mm. This is going to be way easier than the, the first. A lot easier. Cool. And then you just start stuffing them. Neat. That's great. Now yeah. you didn't. Now with this, there isn't any lemon or anything added to that, right? There's, no. That's just. No, there. I didn't add any acidity to this, okay. especially because the strawberries are not in season. Right. Um, they're not going to be as sweet as say the local ones. Sure. Um, so I, I don't have any acidity in there. Mm -hmm. But if you want, if that's something you do want, you mm -hmm. could. If you're going to do that, then I would definitely say when you're done with the strawberries, I would dust them with some icing sugar so that you balance that out. Ah, okay. Cool idea. Now with these, um, again, you can make ahead of time and pop them in the fridge and yeah, no, they're not going to dry out? No, nope, because what will happen is the cheese will firm up again. Okay. So it will hold. Hmm. See, right now it's nice and soft. It's, it, the cheese was at, like I said, just above room, or sorry, a little bit below room temperature. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got the creme anglaise, which is really creamy. Uh, yeah. But if you put it in the fridge, it will solidify a little bit. But what a nice idea, though. Again, it's just such an easy little dessert. It's a, you know, a great... It's simple. It's, I mean, you could have this for a bunch of people coming over because it is just something so sweet and easy to put, you know, you would have lots of food out, even outside of Valentine's Day. It's just yeah. a really nice idea to have. Okay, cool. You know what we're going to do? Go. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to finish it off because I noticed you still have some chocolate there sitting on the board. So we, we're going to... It's Valentine's Day. Yeah, you got to add you some chocolate. chocolate in there. You need right? chocolate. Yes, we do. We definitely <laughs> need chocolate. I'm going to eat that whole thing. We'll be right back in just a few. <laughs> When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. The Hamilton Spectator. At work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. Welcome back to Tara at Home. Uh, we're celebrating Valentine's Day today with you and uh, giving you some good ideas. So we thought we'd do some uh, stuffed strawberries today. Stuffed strawberries, and, yeah. And uh, I love that idea. So obviously using this handy little device made it so made much it easier for us. <laughs> a lot quicker. So a reminder again what we did. Yep, we have the mascarpone cheese. Mm -hmm. We mixed it with creme anglaise. Just mix it up, put it in there. Uh, ho ho hollowed out the uh, strawberries mm -hmm. with our paring knife and then we piped the mixture in. Awesome. Now we're adding one more component to this. You know, I was asked. The most important. Yeah, when we went to commercial, I was asked there what um, what would go well with this. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, oh, right. basil does. Basil goes really, really nice. And, and some people would say, what? Yeah. Like, really? Yeah, basil goes really well. You, mm -hmm. you got to remember this, the main flavor out of this is licorice. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like having licorice mixed in with this, which you can't go wrong with strawberries and everything hmm. else. Okay. So you have some fresh basil and of course, you know, Grown here, you have some nice potted stuff that you can get here at Terra. So, I know that's the handy part is like oh, it, right fantastic. now there's tons of great herbs in the store, so it's good to have those in your kitchen. It is, and it's so much easier. It's better than the stuff that you have just stuck away in your fridge. It's fresh. You're pulling it off, and, pulling, uh, and it continues to it's grow. Something alive in your kitchen this time of year. So yes. it gives you some green, and and it's uh, something you can actually use. Yeah. So beautiful, and add some color to this as well. And of course, when you add this, now mm -hmm. you get into the color. You got red, white, and green, which is. You know, my favorite three colors <laughs> when we're talking about cooking. <laughs> and then, of course. What kind of chocolate? Dark. Dark. Dark Absolutely. chocolate. We got a microplaner. You must do that. And you're just going to shave that right on top. I think we should melt it and pour it all over it. We could do that, too. <laughs> That's my idea. There you go. We'll add that into the next segment. Okay. Melted chocolate poured do on top of everything. Do what you need to do with your chocolate at home <laughs> on Valentine's, right? Whatever it has to be. But that looks beautiful. And I like that we've added the basil. Fantastic idea. Yeah. Very, very good. TaraGreenhouses.com for the recipe. Always nice to have you on the show. Thank you, Thank you so much. And happy Thank Valentine's you. Day to everyone. Have a good night. That's it for now.